Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the University Archives here again to talk to you about one of our collections. And again, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit more about what I was talking about the last time, the photographs of Professor G. H. Bell, who we can see here relaxing when off duty. Now, as I mentioned the last time, Bell took a lot of photographs of Dundee in the 1950s and 60s, which of course was a time of great architectural and physical change for the city, a period of redevelopment. Whether good redevelopment or bad redevelopment is another matter and very much open to your own point of view. But there were important things going on. And one of the important things that was going on was the changes at the waterfront, which we looked at the last time. But there were also changes in the city centre, some cases related to the waterfront changes, like this one, the demolition of Dundee West Station. That's the building in the background you can see, which has been taken down there. You see the scaffolding around it. You can see the, the train shed roofs gone, uh, and basically it was being demolished. Um, it was considered one of the finest railway stations in Scotland, and indeed some people consider it the greatest loss of railway architecture in Scotland. Uh, although there's others that would say Glasgow St Enoch or Edinburgh Princess Street was more significant. However, it was certainly a beautiful building. It's actually the third station on that site, uh, replacing two earlier stations, which had started off as the Dundee and Perth Railway. By the time this station three was built in 1890, it was owned by the Caledonian Railway, uh, which as part of the grouping in the 1920s, became part of the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. But it was generally known as the Calais Station, although Dundee West was its official name. It was on South Union Street, just up from where the current station is. The current station being the old North British Railway, later the London North Eastern Railway Station, uh, which was known as Dundee Tay Bridge, until we went down to one station since when it's just been Dundee. Now, the West Station of the terminals of the stations in Dundee was by far the most striking. So why did it not survive? But Tay Bridge, which a lot of people don't like the architecture of because it's mostly underground. We've had new station buildings on the top recently. Survived. And it comes down to a few factors. One was after the railway companies, the big four as they had become, went into British Rail to meet one nationalised railway company in the 1940s, you didn't have competition and trains going to the same destination over different routes. So all Dundee to Perth trains, for example, could now go from one station. All Dundee to London trains could go from one station, and it made far more sense to take the East Coast route that Taybridge Station traditionally served than the West Coast route from Dundee West going skirting around Glasgow and then down the west coast and on to London that way. Dundee West had also lost some of its local services. Uh, Dundee West had served the Dundee and Newtown Railway, so that meant it had local trains uh, through the suburbs, Lockheed, Downfield, going on to Newtown, sometimes on to Blair Gowery, Cooper Angus, Ayloth, places like that. But the new tower line had closed to passengers in the 1950s. So those services had all gone. So it really lost its purpose. Also, because it was a terminal station, when you're rationalising things down to one station, it limits where trains can go from Dundee West. You couldn't have very easily connected Dundee West with Aberdeen. So it wouldn't have been suitable for through Glasgow to Aberdeen trains, for example. Uh, Tay Bridge could, is a through station. Uh, we see that today, it's still a through station. So in some ways it was inevitable, it was the one that would be chosen to survive. The other problem though was Dundee West was in the way of the redevelopment that was going on down at the Dock Street area as part of the creation of the approaches to the Tay Road Bridge, which opened not long after Dundee West had closed in 1965, Tay Bridge opens in 1966. So basically poor old Dundee West got bulldozed out the way, it's demolished by scaffold as we can see, and then it, it vanishes. So we're lucky that Bell captured this. Now we do have other photographs of Dundee West in the archives, and maybe this is something we can look at in another video. But it's a moment in time captured here. Well, the big, really controversial redevelopment in the 1960s is probably the loss of the Overgate, a process that starts in the 1950s. So here 
we can see if you looking along the end of the overgate. So there's the overgate to the street on the right there. On the left, we've got Nethergate. This area is going to be completely redemolished within a few years of this photograph being taken. We think it's 1957. The buildings on the north of the Nethergate and High Street along towards the city churches would be taken down. All the overgate would be taken down. And these buildings in the foreground here would go. Uh, they are now roughly where I think it's now Prime Market was Little Woods in the Overgate Centre stands. Uh, the building that you see here is many Dundonians will recognise as Monk's Lodging, so called because it's supposed to be where General Monk stayed when he occupied Dundee after sacking the city during the War to the Three Kingdoms in the 17th century. Equally well, it was sometimes called the Duchess of Monmouth's birthplace because the wife of the first Duke of Monmouth, the illegitimate son of Charles II, uh, and sometime claimant for the throne, was born there uh, again in the 17th century. But by the 1950s, in fact earlier, Dundonian's opinion was not good of this building. This was old, this was ugly, Dundee wants to be a modern progressive city. And so areas like the Overgate, as have happened to various bits of Dundee at different times in history, if you know anything about Dundee's architectural history, got swept away. And Bell's got a lovely collection of photographs of, of this area during redevelopment. So here we can see the city churches and Basically, the north and round about them, the buildings have been taken down. If we look at the photograph on the right, we've turned around 180 degrees, are looking back towards the town. You can see the old Clydesdale Bank there. You can see Samuel's Corner. And again, we can see the old lower gates being swept away. There's just a little bit left at the end. That's going to get demolished very shortly after this photograph is taken. Now, you might think, ah, oh, there's Strathday House, the home of Boots. Well, that building's still there, so that didn't go away. Well, yes and no, because we'll move on now to a photograph taken a few years later in the early 1960s. And we can see that although the facade of Strathday House has survived uh, and Boots is still in there, the actual building behind was removed. So basically, we can see massive change. And what we can see that's being built beside that and going up is the Overgate Centre. But it's not the shiny modern Overgate Centre of today. It is the Overgate Centre Mark I, which is a good example of 60s architecture. We can see there it's grey, it's concretey, and it's brutalist. And it was not a success. It was not popular. It's supposed to be modern, but, well, take a look for yourself. On the bottom right picture, we've got a picture uh, looking along the Overgate towards the west. You can see the two tiered walkways in their concrete style. Um, nice big open walkway beside the city churches, but it is really this brutalist style looking architecture. The open walkways weren't really popular. It just didn't really work. So the Overgate Centre actually in that form had a relatively short shelf life, only lasting about 30 years. Uh, and in the 1990s, it started to get demolished with the new Overgate Centre being ready early in the year 2000. On the left hand side and in the back of the picture on the right hand side we can see the other key building to emerge from the ashes of the Overgate and that was the Angus Hotel, Dundee's flagship modern hotel for the 1960s. But again big ugly concrete and brutalist and again it has a very short life. Uh, again 1990s that Angus got demolished and when Bell took these pictures he was probably thinking well I've taken pictures earlier of buildings that are going to be demolished I'm going to take pictures of buildings that are new to show the change and these buildings will still be there years later so people can see how they've evolved well in fact no because they've had such an exceptionally sh short shelf life anyway there's a lot of other photographs we could talk about but we don't want to bore you uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video stay safe and take care and we'll be back with something in the near future.